we've already seen the idea of diverging ideas. You know, with the tariff, Hamilton and Madison thought differently. So a split really begins. And even within his own cabinet, Hamilton and Jefferson, you know, Washington's cabinet will see Hamilton and Jefferson fundamentally disagree on most main issues. That's why in the musical Hamilton, there are two separate songs called Cabinet Battles. It's devoted to the ideological disagreements that they have. Now we see this notion of factions. Think of them as political parties. The Constitution was written without factions in mind, but the debate over ratification made it very clear that there's going to be opposing camps in American politics. Now at first, these factions are simply a collection of letters and conversations between intellectual elites who have a common vision, but it's going to become much more organized by the end of the decade. Now, after the approval of the National Bank, Jefferson and Madison traveled to New York and New England. They took a boat tour of New York and New England to recruit new members to their cause. But the cover story is that they were sightseeing and collecting botanical specimens. Jefferson is even going to hire a journalist for a State Department position, a journalist who agrees with his philosophy, which we can see here. He leaned more towards the Democratic Republican philosophy. Jefferson hires a journalist to work in the State Department underneath him but really he's going to be there to publish a newspaper that will consistently attack hamilton and washington's political positions and character now the federalists keep the similar name that they had in the ratification debate the difference is we have what history sometimes calls democratic republicans with a hyphen at the time they would have simply called themselves republican because they believed in Republican principles, as in representative government and democracy. One of the reasons why sometimes they're called Democratic Republicans is because it's easy to confuse them with the Republican Party of today. The two had a similar name, but they were different. They're not necessarily related to each other. So Jefferson and then Madison, maybe more Madison taking the lead, they're the leaders of the Republicans. Whereas there's no doubt that Hamilton was the main Federalist, and even though Washington never outright declared himself a member of the Federalist Party, his experiences in the Revolution, along with his shared experiences with Hamilton and Henry Knox, led him to believe in the power of a stronger executive and a stronger federal government. He even went so far as to try and convince his counterparts and convince his fellow politicians that a university in the federal capital should be set up where prospective students could watch and experience the government firsthand, free from the influence of their home states. That idea, free from the influence of their home states, flies in the face of Republican ideology. The Federalists want the president to be strong. We need a strong leader. We didn't have that during the war. National power should reign supreme, whereas Republicans want Congress to take the lead and have states reign supreme. There's that idea of implied powers and enumerated powers. Enumerated mean things that are specifically numbered in the Constitution. That's all Congress should worry about no bank. Federalists wanted a bank. They believed in stretching the Constitution in those implied powers. Now, Federalists did believe in agriculture, but they tended more towards manufacturing and commerce. Republicans thought agriculture should take the lead, and it's not to say that they didn't believe in manufacturing and they didn't understand the importance of trade. They just were inclined more to trust what we would call the yeoman farmer, the common American. And even when it came down to who do we trust as a foreign nation, 
Federalists favored trade deals with England, whereas Republicans are going to favor our allies in the war, our friends the French.